Hey everybody, I wanted to go ahead and introduce the company I've been watching. It's called Flexible Solutions International, ticker symbol FSI, up here at the top. Uh, this is a very small cap company. This is $26 million, their market cap. Um, this is a boring company, seem to be consistent. Um, I like I like the technology that they have, and I'll get into some of their products, which they only have two products. Um, and the company seems to be on a good tra trajectory. the f The fundamentals look pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna I'm going to introduce the company here. I'm gonna go over their most recent quarterly report, and I'm going to go over their financials a little bit, and kind of what I'm doing with the company. So here we see the market cap ever since 2021 in decline. The trailing PE ratio and the forward PE ratio have been significantly improving, mostly because the stock price as indicated by the market cap has gone down. However, their, uh, which is not gonna show us here, but their earnings have been doing very well. Um, I don't know if this will show me their results. Usually I'll go to, to market uh, macrotrends.net and look at this information however they do not cover FSI probably because they are so small of a company but here's their total revenue we can see has continually going up and you know to record highs um, let's see net income Net income has been increasing over time. They have issued some bonds and shares, although not, not too many. And their profitability, their margins are increasing. Basic EPS we see increasing. And then this quarter was 33 cents, I want to say. So they've been increasing over time, but uh, given the situation in the market currently, they have been selling off pretty hard. Uh, hitting lows of two dollars or so but let's go ahead and get into the company itself flexible solutions this is their their website here uh, and I navigated to their products tab at the top so they have two products heat saver and water saver and what they do they are a chemical um, that is safe they have effectiveness tests they have uh, documentation proving that they are a safe chemical. What they do is they they sell these two products. One of them you can add to a swimming pool, a hot tub, or a spa, and it prevents evaporation. And we'll get into some of the documents here, but uh, as far as this product, the heat saver, it is about 75% effective compared to a actual tarp that you would put over your pool to prevent evaporation. So it saves quite a bit of money um, if you don't, if you're not able to tarp your pool or you don't have quite a large enough tarp or you have issues with it, people forget to put it back over or use these two things in conjunction. This prevents quite a bit of evaporation and saves on your water bill and, you know, prevents your chemicals from getting thrown off because you have less water. Now you got to add more water. Uh, and then they also have a water saver <clears throat> and this gets um, integrated into industrial applications but mainly water sources lakes rivers waterways canals and it has a 33 percent well it varies and we'll get into some of those studies but uh as low as 20 percent as high as 33 percent reduction in evaporation so instead of the the lake or the river drying up to X amount, this prevents 20 to 33 percent of that evaporation. So Eco Saver, I am going to navigate to the frequently asked questions, and it says that you can swim while it's in your pool and uh, specially formulated to be completely undetectable. You cannot see, feel, smell, or taste the liquid pool cover. Um, 
So it says that swimmers will cause a product to break up, move away from them, and then whenever the water calms behind the swimmer, it reforms, the molecules reform themselves. Uh, it's completely safe for swimmers, pool equipment, and the environment. Toxology reports, which are available if you click this link here, have been done on the product, show it's absolutely safe for use in any swimming pool. <clears throat> it is biodegradable and environmentally friendly. It will not alter the chemistry of your water or affect your equipment in any way. People and pets can swim. Uh, safety was a um, high consideration. It's pH neutral, so it will not affect the chemistry of your pool. It only rests on the very surface of the water, the very top molecules. Um, and in fact, it is only one molecule thick. And so it, it remains on the very, very tip top of your, of your pool. Um, the molecular size of the liquid pool cover, cover is so small, it flows through even the best filter media on the market. So it is treated basically like, basically like water. Um, although it is hydrophobic and you can use it in a smaller hot tub or a bath and uh, they just recommend you use more because the heat of the water will cause more of it to break up and more evaporation. So that is for the heat saver or the liquid pool cover as they refer to it as. And this is, what is this? This is a product evaluation on the water saver dated 2024. No. 2004 and uh, yeah I just wanted I don't want to get into this whole document it's pretty long but um, this is saying it's a commercial product intended to reduce free water surface evaporation it's a finely granulated powder it's marketed as being suitable for applying to drinking water reservoirs uh, potable water storage reservoirs aqueducts and canals ag agricultural irrigation canals and ditches Flood water crops such as rice, stock watering ponds, other water stands or runs without rapids that require evaporation reduction. All right. Feel free to read through some of this. And I shouldn't be closing this stuff out. Let's see. Um, yep, here we go. So evaporation loss. Let's see. Here they're citing 35% savings. So this is untreated. Uh, this is how much water you would use if you did not treat 10,000 gallons. But if you use the water saver, you're only having to use 6,500 gallons because you're not having to restock. No, this is the water saver. Yeah. Uh, you would not have as much evaporation. And here they go into different parts of the world that are their target audience, their target consumer. You have your abundant areas, and then uh, sparsely populated areas, concerns, these parts of the United States, Central America, South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia, Australia, have concerns. Lots of areas are stressed or scarce for water supply, so this would, uh, yeah, this would address these areas and available methods for reducing surface water evaporation. Mechanical covers are costly, $10 per square foot. This doesn't get into the price per square foot, unfortunately, but significantly cheaper than. Average reduction in evaporation of 37.5%, um, 34% here, 34% here. And 35% here in summary for the water saver. So that's pretty significant. Um, let's see, this is a type of monolayer evaporative suppressant for water saving in lakes. And here is the molecule itself. It is one molecule thick, as we see. It's the surface of the water, the atmosphere. It's going to sit on top to prevent evaporation due to wind or temperature and uh, insoluble insoluble 
fatty alcohols and sourced from natural coconut or palm and the actual name of the chemicals here CH3 CH2 15 of those uh, with times 17 carbon hydrogen molecules there and then OH or hexadecanol and octadecanol and here is about 2.2 inches of evaporation that was saved in this study here uh, with the water saver and the control it says here that the difference is statistically significant and it self spreads so here you see the the man dumping the granules the powder into the water 30 seconds later it has dispersed 60 seconds later uh, here's the dispersal range here you can see it start to disperse leaves like a smooth glass appearance um, and then here we have approximately 30 percent in these small scale comparative tests and so that's kind of on the low end the other uh, the other study was showing up to 35 I want to say percent uh, savings and reduction in evaporation and so here is a news release from their Q2 2022 financial results sales in the quarter were 11 million which is significant because the market cap of the company currently uh, statistics I want to say Yeah, the market cap is only 26 million. And the Q2 revenue was 11 million. So in this first half, the revenue has already exceeded the market cap. Um, and they had 8.5 million in the corresponding quarter a year ago. Net profit of 1.6 million or 13 cents per share. Compared to a net profit of 1.2 or 10 cents per share in Q2 2021 so they do make gains year over year quarter over quarter they're very small very slight you know it's it's not significant like you would see with a uh, like a hot a hot Nasdaq type company like an Nvidia although some of those companies have since reversed um, but they do make steady significant um, gains in revenue and margin slightly goes up uh, they are very steady they have been very profitable for a while and they have well we'll get into the rest of it here in a bit um, let's see here is their year-over-year -year results visualized the revenue the income uh, that's gap though well that's gap but that is e well income before income tax here we go their net income visualized about 500 million no 500 thousand dollar increase year over year and their shares you can see that they issued some shares 80 thousand and then the year period Okay, okay. Yeah, that's about it here. Let's hop over to their actual uh, 10Q. And I don't want to go through the whole thing here. I just want to show you that their cash and cash equivalents, 4.4, 4.5 million compared to do, 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 their long term debt of 4.7 million. So they basically have uh, enough cash to pay off their debt currently. If not their net income, or I could show you on the other page, 1.6 million, uh, give them three quarters and they could pay off their debt. So this, this combined with their PE ratio of six and steadily declining, uh, makes them a pretty interesting company to just keep on your your watch list at least. They're pretty boring, pretty small cap. 
get overlooked. I don't think there's anybody who covers analysis on the on the company, um, but they are growing, and it's a very interesting product. Uh, I do a lot of research into the solar companies and other green energy, and fresh water is of concern. You know, you have certain cities around the world where water sources are drying up. If this can buy a couple of years, a couple of months for some cities or countries, that that'd be significant. Or just as a whole, reduce our our fresh water loss um, as a country or across the world. So this is kind of goes hand in hand with with the green ideology when it comes to investing, at least, and and uh, practical application. So that's why this has caught my attention and. I've invested quite a bit, maybe 2% of my portfolio since I've followed them. I've just been buying the dips and I uh, wanted to see how they do it. did on this last quarter before introducing the company here. But this is one we're going to watch as well. And we'll, we'll go into a little bit more depth on their next quarterly report and see, see what, if anything, changes. All right. Thanks for watching.